the passing of New Jack, reportedly the result of a heart attack. And it's all over the various social media platforms right now. Impact Wrestling tweeting about it. And Lance, you could talk for hours about New Jack. So, floor is yours, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could do hours, but, you know, I, I think his two most high-profile runs, you know, was, you know, the Gangsters in Smoky Mountain, and then obviously, you know, as, you know, the Gangster New Jack in, in uh, ECW, and I was there for both of those. So, you know, I shared a lot of locker rooms with New Jack, and, you know, it should surprise no one that we are, you know, polar opposites, and we didn't hang out beyond the locker room, but oddly enough, we always got along. Like, I never had an, an issue with New Jack, and, you know, I was there, I'm trying to think, I guess it was it was uh, either the first or second Smoky Mountain show that we did in Marietta, Georgia. I think it was the first one um, that Cornette brought, you know, Jack and Mustafa in to uh, talk to them about, you know, coming in. And I remember meeting him then, and I remember he had a brand new green Corvette, which for, you know, most of the guys working in Smoky Mountain Wrestling at the time, we were driving much mo more modest cars uh, than Jack was, uh, I assume due to a uh, side job he may or may not have had. But he, you know, he was brought in right away, and, and I remember the first taping, you know, we're up in the hills of, you know, Kentucky or Tennessee somewhere, and it was like, I wonder if he brought his, his Corvette and he had a, a beat up old van that was, uh, he had the back filled with spare tires because Jack was planning on getting some heat and he was planning on being prepared. And man, that dude could cut a promo. Like the, the gangsters in Smokey were, were so great. And, and New Jack, you know, when, when you create a list of, you know, the great promos, it's like, I don't think New Jack gets on that list enough. The charisma and presence and believability of, of what he said and the way he could rile up a crowd. You know, I remember the, the in-ring promo. I think it was his, it might have been the first. Yeah, his, his debut, I think, was in, uh, was uh, the Knoxville Coliseum for the Night of Legends. He did an in-ring, or they did, jacked it all the talking, uh, in-ring pro, promo with J.R., and you could just tell the charisma of this guy and the ability to speak and obviously rile up a um a, a audience that was not as welcoming to a racially diverse <laughs> uh, uh population that you know he he knew what many people in in the south you know, thought of people like New Jack and New Jack was more than willing to embrace that and, and get as much heat as he could. And his promos were incredible. And, and Mustafa was a good part of his act. And it's like, again, I remember going into Harlan, Kentucky, which was the murder capital of Kentucky. And there's like one road in one road out. And it's like, there was debate ahead of time, whether it was wise to book the gangsters there because whether they could get out or not. It's like, you know, New Jack had his van with his spare tires and a gun. And it's like he was he was going to get in and he was going to get out. And he did not give a damn. And, and it was awesome. And, and Jericho and I actually worked a bunch of shows with the gangsters in Smokey. In the summer, all of the county fairs would you know every county had their summer fair and Cornette got booked as one of the you know attractions at the county fairs and they were just the fair shows and it was you know very much what you would call spot show type shows and we did at least i would guess at least a half a dozen of them you know thrill seekers versus you know the gangsters and I remember, and again, I was always, I could take it or leave it as far as working snug. I preferred working light, but I didn't care if guys wanted to get physical. But Jericho liked it snug, and the gangsters liked it snug. So, you know, we were working with probably well done most of our time there who wanted to work really, really light and work, you know, Memphis 101. And the gangsters... Are they, are they still working by any chance? Uh, are they available both, for a they're, match? They're, they're both deceased too, oh, Brian. I'm sorry. But um, and the gangsters were brought in to work with the rock and roll and obviously the rock and roll wanted to work nice and light. So these fair shows were the chance for the gangsters and Jericho to 
to get their snugness <laughs> out of their system. And, and we had matches, but, you know, both could work, and we had good, fun matches, and, and they were a lot of fun. And, and, again, New Jack's promos, you know, again, he probably got Smoky Mountain kicked off some TV, and I know he had protesters out in front of the building and stuff because of some of the stuff he said, but he was awesome. And I, I remember too to get heat because tracy smothers was the wild-eyed southern boy so he had you know he would sell con uh confederate flags and i remember one show new jack come up to him he's like you know you know could i could i get a couple of those from you and he, he's like yeah why he's like would you mind it's like you know I, I think he wanted to tear it up or blow his nose in it or wipe his ass with it or whatever on a show and Trey's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And he gives him a couple. And New Jack goes out and cuts his promo and tells the, you know, the people of Kentucky and Tennessee what he thinks of the Confederate flag and, and wipes his ass with it. And, the, you know, the place was just about ready to riot. And, of course, at intermission at the end of the show, Tracy Smother's gimmick table is just jam-packed with rednecks wanting to buy Confederate flags to, you know, show New Jack that he doesn't get to do that. And it was so great because the next show we get to and New Jack shows up and puts his bag down and Tracy walks over and gives him the two complimentary Confederate flags with, you know, go to it, brother. And, you know, New Jack be like, want me to pay for those? He's like, no, it's all right. I'll make it back. And I think, too, that it turned into a point where Tracy would give, you know, Jack and Mustafa a slight cut of his Confederate flag sales because New Jack was convincing a lot of uh uh rednecks in kentucky to buy confederate flags to wave it at those evil black guys and you know new jack was just happy to take their money and get people hot and then obviously we cross paths again in ecw i don't think i ever worked him in any form in ecw but i was obviously how did you manage that well, we work different styles, Brian. Well, everyone worked a different <laughs> style than you. And, well, I shouldn't say that, but... Uh, no, I worked with the Shane Douglases and the Rob Van Dam well, and the Chris sure, Candidos yeah. and the Jerry Lynns. I mean, it was a hardcore promotion, but I'm also not sure a lot of people work New Jack style. No, but the, the New Jack... I used to call it, you know, like, he, it was a point where at some point he didn't even do matches anymore. He just did run-ins. But... We didn't cross paths. We shared locker rooms, and it was always a lot of fun. Now, granted, I was there for the New Jack um, Sandman locker room fight. That was an interesting one. I think they were both under the influence. And I was there the night that um, he punched out, or at least slugged once, JYD uh, in Marietta, Georgia. I think uh, JYD had an outstanding bill for supplements. And New Jack took offense and took a swing at him. That was also the night that um, Bam Bam Bigelow, he worked uh, Jack. And and Jack uh, blew up so bad in the match that I remember Jack's doing the dive off the, the balcony in, in Marietta. And, you know, he bumps, you know, Bam Bam or whatever. And he was so blown that he had to put an arm around each of the Atlas security guys. And the Atlas security guys had to walk up the bleachers helping new jack climb to the 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 upper deck balcony part so that he could climb over the guardrail and basically let gravity take its course and fall on bam bam and then bam bam legitimately had to pick him up throw him over his shoulder and walk back to the ring with jack on his shoulder to hit his finish and pin him in the middle of the ring and it was just like i just remember laughing that well maybe if he hadn't gotten a fight with you know um jyd before the show he would have been able to have a little more gas with fighting with bam bam but i always got along with him he he was funny and he was charismatic and the was it waltham i think it was waltham pa we used to run a show with ecw it was a house show and it was a church or a temple or something we eventually got booted out because it was a, a new religious order that was going in that didn't want wrestling there but we changed in the back and there was a piano and um new jack was not a shy man and he would often when in this building um not just walk around naked but he would play the piano without using his hands and i ever remember thinking i think i was sitting there with bam bam one time with it's like I wonder what the nuns are going to think when they come in tomorrow and they're playing the piano, knowing that New Jack had just played this piano without using his hands. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.